All right. Today we will be solving an eight mark essay question of paper two from section B. And this question is about trade union, the trade union's impact on economy. This question is taken from May, June 2018. The variant is 2-1 and question is 5D. Marks are eight. And this is an evaluation type of question where you have to present contrasting viewpoints. Um, your analysis and evaluative skills are being judged in this question. So AO2 and AO3 are the assessment objectives. It's not a difficult question, but it is absolutely important. If you go without knowing this question in your examination, you will be at a serious disadvantage. So uh, trade union is important in itself. So um, it's always advisable to know the analysis part of trade unions as well, apart from knowing the basic uh, types and the definition. So let's dig right in. Let's understand what the question is all about. But before we do, the key concepts to know is what is a trade union, types of trade union, the functions of a trade union, benefits of a trade union, and industrial action and its types. So it will help if you know this beforehand before solving this question. The question is, discuss whether or not increasing the strength of trade unions will benefit an economy. So the objectives being judged are you'll get four marks for analysis and four marks for evaluation. Uh, please note that the question talks about increasing the strength of trade unions and doesn't talk about how a strong trade union will benefit an economy. You have to understand that when you increase the strength of a trade union, what happens? If you answer this question uh, in very general terms and if you explain the advantages of trade unions to an economy, you may lose out on marks, especially when it comes to evaluation. Uh, it's always good to start your question with a start and finish in mind. When you do an eight mark question, you have to write a two sided essay or a contrasting viewpoint essay. You, you just can't give a one sided um, answer. You just can't write positives or strengths. You have to evaluate the strengths along with limitations and weaknesses. Hence, this uh, question is divided into two parts. The one sided positive is one part and contrasting viewpoint, which is negatives, is the other part. Um, I always find it useful if I have a start and finish in mind and I have to fill the slots in between. So for writing the one sided part or the analysis part, I may start with a sentence like increasing the strength of trade union and it would finish may benefit an economy. So now I have to find the link between how increasing the strength of a trade union may benefit an economy, right? And I would write two factors for this. So let's start increasing the strength of the trade and of course, in the negatives, uh, increasing the strength of the trade union may not benefit an economy. That could be the contrasting view. To start the question, I would write increasing the strength of the trade union may increase their bargaining power with the employers. They already have bargaining powers and negotiation powers. But if you increase the strength of the trade union, this may increase the bargaining power with the employers. With this bargaining power, they may negotiate to raise living standards of the employees. Now you're analyzing what happens if the bargaining power of a trade union has been increased. Further analysis, this may reduce poverty levels and raise living standards, which may benefit an economy. So you see how I have connected my start to my finish. If I look at the marks, I may not get a mark for knowledge because this question does not implicitly ask you for um, for a knowledge point, but it is always better to give some knowledge or definition in between. It, it boosts your confidence. So increasing the strength of the trade union may increase the bargaining power with the employers. Now, when I'm analyzing this with this bargaining power, they may negotiate to raise living standards for the employees. I will get one mark for this. And how may this help the economy? This may reduce poverty levels and raise living standards, which may benefit an economy. So of course, the burden of the government is being reduced. Um, people are able to feed for themselves. So, you know, the economy benefits on a whole. 
I may write increasing the strength of the trade union may make them provide employee training. So if you strengthen uh, the train the strength of a trade union, they may bargain to um, provide training for their employees. How will this help? This may increase skill level of the and may improve productivity and also increase the potential of an economy. So not only the skill level will increase of the employees but the productivity will also rise and because of that they will be able to produce more so when they produce more the potential of an economy rise remember this this increases the ppc of the economy as a whole when the productivity of resources increasing so employees are labor if their skill is increasing the productivity is increasing and also the potential of an economy is increasing so this may benefit an economy because now the economy can, is able to produce more goods and services however on the other hand so if i but before doing that if I get two points uh, for this particular uh, explanation so i get four marks from my analysis on a whole and now moving towards the contrasting viewpoints which is the evaluation part of the question i will start a new paragraph and i will write However, increasing the strength of the trade union may lead to more industrial disputes if demands of the union are not met. What this means is that if a uh, trade union is made to grow stronger and its demands are not met, it may go on strike. It may not listen to uh, what is being said and this may in industrial actions such as strikes and shutdown. This may reduce production in an economy and affect growth. Hence, this may not benefit an economy. Right? Uh, you, you can understand how clearly I have used by increasing the strength of the trade union, it may not always benefit an economy. And one of the reasons is because if you make a, econ a trade union stronger, they may um, initiate industrial strikes and industrial action. So I get two marks for this for evaluation and then also if demands of the unions are being accepted such as increased pay level this may drive up the cost for the employers prices may go up due to cost push which may make domestic products expensive against imported substitutes hence this may not benefit an economy in the long run. I have used the the concept that if the trade unions are made more powerful they may ask for increased pay levels and increased pay would mean that the employers would now have to increase the prices in order to get the same amount of profit which would make the domestic products expensive against imported substitutes and hence people or consumers would move move towards more imported substitutes or may move towards import substitutes and may ditch the or leave the domestic products because they're getting more expensive and this may not benefit the economy in the long run of course so two marks here so now if and the way i've answered it i get four marks for analysis and four marks for evaluation and i'm hoping i would get a total of eight marks you may not write this in the way uh, which I have written you could use any other um, concept if you feel comfortable but if you would follow this you have a higher chance of scoring well because this gives you a structured approach on how to solve an essay question. The keywords and concepts used in the solution are bargaining power, living standards, employee training, productivity, economic potential, industrial disputes, industrial action strikes cost push inflation and substitutes it would be beneficial if you know the meaning of these key terms before using them in your answer you may refer to your text or you may refer to an economic dictionary or you may write to me on explaining this in the comments section and i would respond um,